Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As the title says above, this is going to be part two to my January book haul. The first part, you can click the eye on the screen to watch, and that's basically me hauling all of the non-fiction Christian books that I received for the month of January. And this is going to be all of the Christian fiction, biblical fiction novels that I've purchased and received. So, I have a total of like 27 books, but it's really 30 books because like I have duplicates of three different books. And I'll explain why as I go through this haul but um yeah I purchased quite a lot of books um at some really good prices like really good prices and then I do have a stack here of review books that were sent to me um so I have two finished copies and I think four arc copies um so I'm going to talk about those then we're going to get into the books that I purchased myself so starting off with the two finished copies that were sent to me both were sent to me from Bethany House I do work with them um with their blogging program and I adore them I do get uh like Christian fiction novels and then I also get Christian non-fiction books as well from them so this month they sent me two books the first one is The Curse of Misty Wayfair by Jamie Jo Wright I know nothing about this book I know that it is a romantic suspense it has Christian aspects to it and I'll quickly read the back of it so it says left at an orphanage as a child Thea Reed vowed to find her mother someday now grown her search takes her to turn of the century Pleasant Valley Wisconsin wow okay Wisconsin I've never been there <laughs> Um, when the clues she finds lead her to a mental asylum, Thea uses her experience, experience as a post-mortem photographer to gain access and assist groundkeeper Simeon or Simon Coyle, Coy, Coy, I don't know how you say that name, but yeah, in photographing the patients and uncovering the secrets within. However, she never expected her personal quest would reawaken the legend of Misty Wayfair, a murdered woman who allegedly haunts the area and whose appearance protends portends it definitely says portends death um then it says a century later heidi lane receives a troubling letter from her mother who is battling dementia compelling her to travel to pleasant valley for answers to her own question to her own questions of identity sorry when she catches sight of a ghostly woman haunting the asylum ruins in the woods the long-standing story of misty wayfair returns and with it heidi fears heidi's fear for her own life as two women cross time seek answers about their identities and heritage they must overcome the threat of the mysterious curse that has them in has them intertwined sorry i just read that terribly but basically what i'm understanding is that there are two different women's women from two different time periods i'm assuming because it says a century later so two different women who are dealing with things with their mother one her mother has died and the other she's at this asylum both tend to go to uh wisconsin to this asylum and there's this woman named Misty Wayfair that died there and she's haunting and killing people apparently or something like that that's the gist of what I'm getting from it again I'm not sure this is a new type of genre for me I prefer to stick to paranormal novels romance novels um, fantasy novels those are the things that I prefer so this is definitely going to be one that I try the next book is a historical fiction romance and I'm not really into historical fiction and I know that kind of sounds weird because biblical fiction is a subgenre of historical fiction but I'm not a history person. Um, I, I don't care for history, like, at all. Like, history is my worst subject. And um, there's not really many historical fictions that I'm into. There is an author that I do love because they ended up turning one of her books into a TV show on stars. And it was called The White Queen. And I watched it, fell in love with it, and then I read The White Princess. Um, both are by Philippa Gregory. I love those books so much. So definitely love her writing. I own all of her books. I haven't read all of them, though. But, um, yeah, so I decided to get back into it, especially since a lot of the Christian fiction novels that I look up are typically historical romances, though I'm not into them. So I decided to go for it, and this one is called Between Two Shores by Jocelyn Green. Yeah, and the cover is stunning. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But um, this says she has always moved between two worlds, but now she must choose a side. So it says the daughter of a Mohawk mother and a French father in 1759 Montreal, Catherine Duval, would remain would rather remain neutral in a world tearing itself apart content to trade with both the french and the british catherine is pulled into the seven years war against her wishes when her british ex-fiance samuel crane is taken prisoner by her father samuel claims he has information that could help in the war and he asks catherine to help him escape and basically um the two of them flee and there is a battle between england and france and yada 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 <laughs> um i know that just sounds weird for me to say it like that but yeah it sounds really interesting to me um, with the whole English and French and whatnot, but um, we'll see how I feel about it. 
uh, again this is one of those genres that i'm not really too fond of but i want to give it a go and um hopefully it goes well i'm hoping to at least give this four stars hopefully moving on i got this book from what is the company shadow mountain i have been working with them recently on a few of their books and um it's called proper romance i actually do love their woman's uh women's fiction um contemporary romance is really cute but this one is again historical this one is more western it takes place in wyoming territory in 1876 and the gist of this well first of all the title is called healing hearts and i believe this is the second book in the sheriffs of savage wells I believe that's the name of the series. Uh, I'll put the series name if that's not it. But basically, there is a guy. His name is Gideon McNamara. Gideon McNamara. And he basically wants to get married. Um, so he does a mail-in order bride um, service. But he basically specifies that he wants a woman that is a nurse because he is a doctor where he works, where he lives at. And um, there is a girl. Her name is Miriam. She comes thinking she's applying for the position of a nurse not realizing that she's really supposed to be his wife she's not up for that she just wants to be a nurse he prefers to have a wife and it's just the two of them um you know building a romance after there's some drama which sounds really intriguing like super intriguing i kind of like those kind of romances where it's like um arranged marriage but then the female doesn't want to marry them and then they end up falling in love down the line after things go on so i'm excited to see how this is and this is a clean romance if i'm not mistaken so we'll see the next book is a kind of sci-fi fantasy novel, and it's called Bless the Prodigal Daughter by A.L. Bryant. I did receive this from the author. Um, she wrote me a little note. I'm going to keep it in the book, though, because I just I love when authors write me little notes. But um, it says, her body is covered in wounds. She cannot remember the attack that left her bleeding out in the squalid, squalid alleyway. Her recovery is supernatural. Her power is unstable. An otherworldly beast haunts her. Haunted by visions and struggling to suppress her ability, she desires only to survive long enough to find the voice that calls softly to her, imploring her to return. It sounds really good. There are some fan, um, some Christian aspects, of course, and I'm excited to see where this goes. I have become a major fan of fantasy um, as far as like in the Christian genre because I read Mark of the Raven by Morgan Bussey. Um, so, yeah, we have the prodigal daughter and I'm excited to see where this goes. Okay, so the last two arcs are like exciting arcs because I read one already and the other one was totally a shocker. So this right here is by Melanie Dickerson and it is the Warrior Maiden. Um, this is the arc and this is the ninth book in the Hagenheim series. And the Hagenheim series is basically a fairy tale retelling um, but with Christian aspects to it, which I mean, totally amazing. She's done retellings of Sleeping Beauty. I think she's done one on um, Cinderella. She's done one on the princess and the frog she's done one on uh i can't think straight but you know fairy tale retelling she's redone and this one is a retelling of milan and i loved it so much so so much that um i am immediately going to be reading the rest of the eight books and a bunch of her other series because i just i like when people take our like beloved fairy tales and retell them in a more modernized way this one is more so written in a historical fiction kind of way, but because it is geared towards young adults, I could get along with this, and I do love Mulan, so I totally loved it. Love the scriptures that were involved in this. I mean, I was I was in here underlining this stuff. I didn't, I didn't write the scriptures down on that, but I enjoyed this. Here we go. Here's one that was a scripture I wrote down. Um, so I totally just enjoyed this book so much. Gave it five stars. I have my review li linked down below. I I love it so so much. Definitely, if you're um, a young adult watching my video, even if you are an adult and you're looking for a fantasy novel or a fairy tale retelling that's kind of clean, um, not too crazy, this one is going to be it because it is so cute in the romance and it is very much clean. There is no kissing in this until literally the last chapter, like literally the last chapter or two. So I loved it. So the last arc that I have was one that I was so so excited for. So. I have to tell you the story behind this arc because I wasn't expecting this arc. So, um, Misu Andrews, who wrote Isaiah's Daughter, which I did read and raved about before, she, on her blog, she has this thing where she, um, has, like, a street team. I can't remember what she calls it, but, um, I'm gonna say a street team because that's what I think of when I thought of, when I saw her form. And a street team is basically when authors, um, they open it up for people to join in to get arcs of their books, be it physical arcs or e-arcs, to review the books while they're in the process of writing them. And um, 
I signed up for it, even though it was for, literally for last year. Like I said, 2018, but something said to just, you know, give it a go, sign up, especially since it was still open. So I signed up and everything. I sent all the information and stats and everything. And, um, you know, the author enjoyed everything that I put in the email. And also the people that worked, like her assistants and stuff, enjoyed it. But then the author sent me an email the following day explaining that she would really love to put me on like in the group but she doesn't want other people to feel bad because other people have had their friends request and she you know would deny them and I totally understood that you know it's, it's it's a business I definitely understood that so I saw on her blog that she had some free um bible study kind of study study discussion questions for all of her books which I downloaded and that she had bookmarks that she had for her books so I did request the bookmarks and I literally have them here <laughs> like I, I got five of each so we have love amid the ashes there is Love in a Broken Vessel bookmark, Love Sacred Song, I have that bookmark. Um, then we have, what's this, uh, In the Shadow of Jezebel, Isaiah's Daughter, like I literally got all of the bookmarks. And then she has a double-sided bookmark for uh, Pharaoh's Daughter and Miriam. So it's literally double-sided. So, you know, I requested the um, bookmarks, you know, not thinking anything of it because obviously this is a business. Lo and behold, you guys, she sent me an arc of her book and I'm like so stoked. Now, mind you, I signed up for the launch team with Waterbrook and Mount Normal, which is the publishing company she's working with for this book. And um, I signed up like three months ago and they just responded literally after I received this book. I got an email from the company, the publishing company, saying that I got approved so that they're also sending me another arc. So I'm going to have two copies of this book. <sighs> I'm debating on giving this away because um, you know, I, I really want to give back to you guys and I really want to push biblical fiction because I think it's amazing. So I'm thinking about giving it away. But um, yeah, this is book two in the Pharaoh, the Prophets and Kings, if I'm not mistaken, if that's what it's called. Let me look again. Yes, the Prophets and Kings series. Um, the first one being Isaiah's Daughter, which was about the prophet um, Isaiah and King Hezekiah. This one here, A Fire and Lions, is about Daniel and... Um, oh, who's the king? Oh, gosh. Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. So, it's about Daniel and King ne Nebuchadnezzar. And, um, yeah, there is a sneak peek preview of the first two chapters. I'll leave it linked down below. You guys can check out. I ended up um, reading through that. I, down I downloaded it printed it out, read through it, fell in love with it, and I was so excited when I heard that they was coming out with the launch team for it, but then I saw on her blog that she was giving out art copies, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I have a copy. So excited. Can't wait to dive into this so much because it was so good. Okay. With all that fangirling out of the way, um, let's move these bookmarks out of my way. So, I went crazy on the book buying. I don't even know where to start. Um, I'm going to start off with the books that I have in front of me because... It just, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to start off with my Amazon purchases. So, you guys know I rave about Tessa Afshar quite a lot because I really, really love her writing. Her writing is amazing. She has seven books out that's, like, published. Um, I own all seven now, thankfully. But the five that I had previous to these two, I read all of them. Of those five, I gave four of them five stars and one a four star. So I definitely wanted to just read all of her books because her writing is so amazing. And so I got the last two books and they're from her New Testament series. So this one is called Land of Silence and this is the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And it just sounds really, really intriguing and really sad. I know there's going to be tears just because there's so much like sadness going on in this book. Um, but this is based around her interaction with touching the hem of Jesus' garment and being healed. So I'm excited to dive into this one. Again, here is the cover. The cover is really gorgeous. I have to say, Tessa Afshar's covers are just, they slay all day, every day. They're always slaying, just saying. But yeah, we have this one. The next one I have from her is called Bread of Angels. And this is the story of Lyd Lydia. Yeah, Lydia, and she was the seller of the purple cloth, and it's just her story, and I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, this sounds really sad, but I'm hoping it's not too sad. Um, I don't think this is as depressing as Land of Silence is, but I'm excited to dive into this and read more and learn more about Lydia. And because I loved Tessa Afshar and had to purchase all of her books, I went ahead and did the same thing for Connie Lynn Cassette. So Connie Lynn Cassette is the author of the Cities of Refuge saga. I'm going to call it a saga because I think there's going to be more than three books. Um, so the first book is called A Light on the Hill and the second one is called Shelter of the Most High. I have talked about both on my channel. I have loved both, gave both five stars. And I decided to get her previous trilogy because the main character in 
a light on the hill is in this trilogy as well from what i heard so i decided to go for it and the covers are stunning and this is called the out from egypt trilogy so basically this is um biblical fiction based off of the exodus and it doesn't focus on a biblical character but moses as i've heard is included in the stories so we have counted with the stars which is book one shadow of the storm which is book two and you guys can tell me this cover is gorgeous and this is literally my favorite cover but i'm going to show you guys my favorite cover of the whole entire trilogy wings of the wind is the last book and i love 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 this cover so much because the mint with that pop of purple at the bottom just really pops and it's just gorgeous and it's everything it's giving me life um and her makeup just slays i am going to be doing some makeup videos on this channel soon um, so sorry for you guys who don't like makeup, but as a freelance makeup artist, I really do miss putting on makeup on my face. And, um, I'm going to be doing probably like a book series kind of makeup look because I'm enjoying the looks on these books. Just saying. Then I also got two more books because why not? So the first one was by Angela Hunt and it's Jerusalem's Queen. This is the third book in the Silent Years series. Um, the fourth book I think is going to be about Herod his queen or Herod the king I don't know it's called Herod something I'll put the image here that's the fourth book it's coming out this year but um I heard the third book is really really good out of all three books um the first and the third book I've heard were really good the second book was okay I do have the first book which I'll show you guys shortly but um yeah I not I'm not gonna lie this was a cover by like cover by and I've read other books from Angela Hunt and I gave those four stars so I'm hoping this is a five star read but do you guys see that cover her face is gorgeous and i already had an e-arc of this through net galley so i just figured why not next we have this from lynn austin and it's called gods and kings and this is centered around king hezekiah and i believe there are some yeah zechariah um uriah the high priest so i'm excited i really just love king hezekiah ever since i read um isaiah's daughter because it goes into depth of his story um and you know i've heard about king ahaz from the bible and whatnot how he was you know just rude and just stubborn so yeah i'm excited to dive into this this is a five book series um i just got book one i do own all five on ebook but i don't know for biblical fiction i prefer physical copies because i like to write in them especially when they have scriptures that's just me but um yeah of gods and no gods and kings so the first one and um yeah Okay, so if you guys follow me in my group, you know that I went on a ministerial development retreat with my church. It was just me, um, the ministers, my pastors, my bishop, um, and the administration department. We went away for the weekend up in PA, and it was so fun. And they had a gift shop, and unbeknownst to me, they had a little $5 book section, and I got some books. So, yeah. Um, the first book you literally already saw, but I got a second one. Let's, let me just show you the covers together. Like, I literally have two copies of this book. So this book will be given away, so I'll be giving this one away. Um, but I did get this one from the store, the gift shop store at the retreat center. And it was only $5. Like, all of these books I'm getting ready to show you guys were $4.99. $5 a piece. So, um, yeah, I got book two of the Out, of, Out from Egypt <laughs> series. Sorry, had to think about that. But, yeah, I have book two, so this will be given away for a giveaway soon. Then I have, I don't even know what this series is called. It's called The Lost Books. Yeah, it's called The Lost Books series. Um, books of the, Books of History Chronicles, I believe, is the series. And it's from... Ted Decker but I only got books two three four and six so I'm missing book five and I'm missing book one but that is okay so we have infidel renegade chaos and Elion. Elion. yeah so I got these and this is basically a kind of why a Christian fantasy sci-fi kind of series I've heard mixed reviews about it um I want to give it a go for myself personally and if I don't like it it's okay I can always just give it to my library or save it for my son when he grows up um they're action-packed they are you know centered around some scripture from what I've heard so I'm excited to just dive in and see how I feel about it 
So the last set of books I got from a store called Thrift Books, and I've heard about Thrift Books now for the past like four or five years or so, and um, I just never wanted to purchase from them, but I really was like, you know what, let me just try it out, because what it is is they have free shipping over $10, and they're basically a secondhand used online bookstore, and what they do is they buy used books from um, different companies instead of the companies throwing them out, and they resell them. Now, they do have different levels of different books, so you can have... Um, you can purchase brand new books from them. You can get books that are acceptable. And acceptable books basically look beat up, like beat up. Um, you can purchase books that are in good condition. You can purchase books that are in very good condition. You can purchase books that are like new. So there are ranges for their books if you're purchasing between, you know, acceptable to like new. It literally can range anywhere from like three bucks to ten dollars depending on the book um is pretty much you go on there and you browse and you figure out what kind of book you want so i decided to give them a try since there were a lot of biblical fiction novels that i really wanted for myself and wanted to dive into so i made a few orders i ordered 10 books but um they they sent four over because four of them came damaged um so yeah, so their books come in these little packages here that just say thrift books, um, you know, and it's kind of like, when, it's kind of like ordering from, um, Goodwill online, in a sense, um, but you don't know the true condition of your books, like, when you get them. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to go grab my receipt, I'm going to see if I can grab my receipt for you guys, and I'm going to show you guys the books and um tell you guys my thoughts on thrift books and if i got if i recommend it to you guys and that'll be it so give me one second to grab that receipt okay so i went and just grabbed my receipt and i actually pulled up the website so i could tell you guys um the different like levels um so what they call them are basically the conditions so you can get brand new books you can get like new which are basically an unapparently unread copy in perfect condition and that the dust jacket is intact your pages are clean and not marred by notes and you know folds or anything you have very good which is um, a copy that has been read but remains in excellent condition pages are intact there are no notes no highlightings and the spine remains undamaged and then you have good copies which are a copy that has been read but remains in clean condition pages are intact the cover is intact the spine may show signs of wear pages can include limited notes highlighting and the copy can include from the library of labels or previous owner inscriptions so basically good copies can have um writing inside they can have um you know signatures in the book or whatever the case may be um but nothing too crazy um, and then you have very good, which is basically, it has no marks, it has no highlights, um, pretty much the only thing that might, that you might see is like some wear and tear slightly on the pages, pretty much that's it, and, um, like new, which is a book that looks like brand new. So, I have my, um, order here, and I'm gonna run through the books with you guys, because when I got the packages, I went through, looked through, and, um, I did have a problem with four of the books, and I did contact the company, and they did resend me the books. So, I do have two of the books here to show you guys, but the other two will not be here until Monday. I'm recording this on Saturday, February 2nd, so when I do get those other two books, I will probably just enter the clip at the end of this video. But, moving on, we're gonna start off with Love Amid the Ashes by Misu Andrews. I love me some Misu Andrews, and I probably said Mesu Andrews earlier, but Misu Andrews, um, she is the author of Isaiah's Daughter, as well as the arc that I just showed you guys, which is A Fire in Line. So, this is one of her um books from her first trilogy and i i can't really think of the name of the trilogy i am sorry but it's called love amid the ashes and this one if i'm not mistaken yes it is the story of job um so it says when her beloved grandfather isaac dies dina must follow his final command travel to job's household to marry his son after job's world comes crashing down dina finds herself drawn to this great man brought low what will she risk to fight for his survival um, and it just says that she weaves an emotional and stirring account of Job and Dina. Love Amid the Ashes breathes life, romance, and passion into the classic biblical story of suffering and steadfast faith. If you guys don't know who Job is, Job basically lost all ten of his kids. He lost his family. He lost everything. Um, but he still remained faithful to God throughout all of that. His friends turned his back on him. His wife turned his back on him. But he remained faithful throughout. And then God blessed him at the end 
like doubled it, double fold, triple fold, whatever you want to call it. So this is basically her story. Um, for this book, I paid a total of four dollars and thirty-one cents, and I ordered it in very good condition. Again, very good condition is basically a copy that has been read but remains in excellent condition. Pages are intact and not marred by notes or highlighting, and um, the spine remains undamaged. So there is no damage to the spine. It looks pretty much good. Um, you know, the pages are a little bent up here, which doesn't bother me, and the back is a little dented. But um, it wasn't so bad that I was, like, complaining. So I think this was an, a good copy that I received from them. The next book I have is Iscariot by Tosca Lee, and it's a novel of Judas. And this basically is a biblical fiction novel based off of Judas. Yes, the same Judas that portrayed Jesus. So I'm excited to dive into this. I did get this in a hardcover. I paid, let's see... $3.99 for this and it is in good condition. So good condition is a copy that has been read, remains intact, but can have um, signs of wear, limited highlighting notes and all of that. The only thing with this is that the dust jacket looks a little bit bent up, but that's pretty much it. I mean, $4 for a hardcover copy, that's good. Um, the spine is not damaged on this book whatsoever. So yeah, let me see. Okay, so on the back, it says, the story you thought you knew, Judas is Iscariot. I'm probably saying it wrong. His name, I can never say it right. But um, it says, history has called him many things. Thief, liar, traitor, rivaled throughout history and infamous for his suicide. He is the man whose very name is, a, is synonymous, synonymous sorry, with betrayal and only dis, the only disciple that Jesus called friend. From the acclaimed best-selling author of Hava, the story of Eve, Iscariot is a compelling portrait. Of biblical history's most maligned character from his tumultuous childhood to his emergence as the man known to the world as the betrayer of jesus but even more it is an extraordinary view into the life of jesus that forces us to re-examine everything we thought we knew about the most famous and infamous religious icons in history so i'm excited to see how this um plays out as far as judas because we all know judas to be like this evil just wrong betrayal of a man who like did the worst that he could do to jesus so i'm excited to dive into this book and for the price four dollars great copy the next two books are also from angela hunt like i mentioned earlier with jerusalem queen this is from her dangerous beauties um trilogy i have read esther i don't own it physically but i have read it and gave it four stars so i did find books two and three so book two is beth sheba and this one i got as like new condition i paid four dollars and 19 cents and it's pretty much good condition um to me it's not like new but you know it's good condition so that's pretty good and i'm excited this is the only one i haven't read from the trilogy so i'm excited to see how this goes so we have that in the covers on this it's just gorgeous the next one from the Dangerous Beauties trilogy is going to be Delilah, which is book three. Now, this one um, I got in good condition and I paid $3.79 for. First of all, stunning cover. I read this book, gave it four stars. I did enjoy the story of Delilah and Samson, um, but I really got it just because the cover is like everything to me. This cover is everything, you guys. Every Like, everything, and I definitely will want to reread this and mark it up. Um, I did enjoy it. I probably will enjoy it more than now that I have a physical copy. Um, and it came in pretty much good condition. There's no markings or anything. So, you know, there is some slight wear and tear, but nothing too crazy. So we have Delilah. The next book that I have is by Diana Wallace Taylor, and it is Journey to the Well. And it's basically the story of the Samaritan woman. And I paid, how much did I pay for this? I paid $3.99 and I got it in very good condition. Um, I have no complaints with this book. There is like little scars and stuff, like scratches and stuff, but I can easily just wipe that off. Um, but yeah, pretty much good condition, like nothing too bad. So yeah, we have that. Okay, so the next book that I have is from Liz Curtis Higgs, and this is more of a historical fiction Biblical fiction, if that makes sense, kind of, sort of. Um, it's historical fiction based off of the Bible. It is the retelling of Ruth and Naomi, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it is called Mine is the Night. And here is the cover. It is very gorgeous. I paid four nineteen for this, and I got it in like new condition. And I have no complaints with this. This book is pretty much like new. Like, li literally, it looks like a brand new book that somebody just tossed to the side. However, this one... Came with a bookmark inside, so I do have a bookmark of her books. And I do own all of these books on e-reader, um, because this is also a sort of biblical retelling as well. Um, but yeah, I came with a bookmark, and this was actually a signed copy 
to a Miss Patricia. <laughs> so this was the person who owned the book, but Liz Curtis Higgs actually like signed it. So I think that's a plus with um, finding thrift books is that sometimes you'll find signed copies. And I don't mind it having the original person's name on it. I can always cover it with a sticker. But um, Liz Curtis Higgs signed this book, you guys. Like, she signed it. And I don't have many signed copies. So I'm excited for that. And plus, got a free bookmark out of it. Then we get into my problematic books. So I did get the second book to Mine is the Night, which is um, Hair Burns My Candle. This was the sequel to that. And um, this, I purchased this with, how did I purchase this? I purchased this as very good condition, right? But the spine, if you guys can see, is broken. Um, broken, damaged, however you want to call it. And yeah, it's pretty much broken, like right here is where the pages like just break open yeah spine is broken if you guys i don't know if you guys can see but the spine on that is broken and it's disgusting so the, the books that i i had that came damaged i did take pictures of and contact the company and they resent out books however the new copy they sent me the spine isn't damaged but the cover kind of looks it, it doesn't look bad but i mean compared to this worst copy i might as well just keep this worst copy so i have a second copy which I'll include in a giveaway then we move on to this book which I was a little upset about I'm sorry hair burns my candle I said I paid 419 for so moving on we have Egypt's sister which I purchased it in very good condition which very good condition means like you know almost like brand new and I paid five dollars and 21 cents I think that was the most expensive book that I paid for however this book came with a gaping hole in the cover gaping you guys like do you see the hole do you see it and you do you see that it came with a hole but the hole also went through another page like it was insane so i contacted them directly and told them hey um i purchased this in very good condition it has a rip through it that's going through two pages the the book itself is like bent up and out of shape and um they again immediately sent me a new fresh copy so i do have a fresh copy and it does not have any problems except for being bent here but again i am not a book snob it doesn't really bother me but if i purchase something in a specific way i'm expecting it to look a specific way not come to me with a hole in it so when they do send out books they do let you keep the books that you already purchased so i do have this if anyone wants it it is the first book in the silent years series and i did haul um jerusalem's queen already so jerusalem's queen is the third book this is the first book and the second one is judah's wife and the fourth book is coming out this year i do do own judah's wife on ebook i do own all of these books on ebook but i wanted physical copies so um yeah i got that and um i have this i don't know if anyone wants it it has a hole in it so i'm not sure We'll see. Um, and the last two books, um, I don't have the new copies because they'll be here on Monday. They should have been here today. But I'm still going to haul them anyway and I'll insert clips for the end when I get them on Monday. But um, I have Return to Me by Lynn Austin. It's the first book in the Restoration Chronicles. And um, I got this book in very good condition. I paid $5.21, so the same price as um, Egypt's Egypt sister. And this one came with pin marks all over it. Like, literally pin marks just everywhere and again i don't mind that but um if i paid for something that's supposed to be like new i don't want it to have a hole or to have pin marks so they are sending me a new copy i don't have the new copy hopefully the new copy is like new um and then i'll be giving this copy away and oh i didn't even get into this so um this one is about it says, after decades of exile, the prophecies are coming true. King Cyrus has declared the Jews may return to Jerusalem. Ido, a priest, is sure this is a sign of God's renewed favor. Far too, for too long, they've remained in Babylon, and many, including Ido's sons, are losing the faith that sets them apart. Um, but, you know, some of his family doesn't want to go. And this talks about Zechariah. I think he was a prophet. Yeah, the prophet <laughs> Zechariah. So um, I'm excited to dive into this book. The final book that I got was called The Robe. And I got this again in very good condition. I paid $4.19 for this book. And yet again, this was another book that I had to contact them on. Because um, this, it came with water damage on some of the pages. And it's not even really bad. But again, if I'm paying for a specific type of condition, I want my book in that condition. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, also, this one came with a broken spine. I'm not gonna, sure if you're going to be able to see it, but... Uh, right here, the spine is broken. 
it's not too bad it's not like terrible but again when you pay for a specific condition you're expecting that right okay so moving back to the robe um apparently this is a story of the guy that took jesus's robe um because you know how they um did lots for jesus's clothing when they crucified him um this is following the story of the guy who had the robe and i've heard many people worry about this book so many times so i decided to get it and um this book retails for 16.95 again i got it for 5.21 no, not 521, 419. And again, it's not in a bad condition, but if I pay for like new condition, I expect like new condition. So again, I contacted them and this book will be here on Monday. So this is not a messed up condition at all. Like, not at all. There was slight water damage, but it's not like severe here. It's not severe at all. Like, you can definitely, it's really legible, but. Again, I expect something that your website says. So that's why I contacted them just to eat and also to see how the customer service is. So this will also be a book that I give away. So again, I do have five books here that I want to give away. One I'm not too sure about. So I'll run through those books again with you guys. So I have Shadow of the Storm by Connie Lincasette. This is book two from her Out of Egypt series. I have Here Burns My Can Do from Liz Curtis Higgs which is book two, and I don't even know what the name of this series is. Um, I'll put the title on the screen, but I have this. Um, it's not damaged, but you can definitely tell there was some wear and tear on the front cover. Like, you guys can see the front cover. But I, I feel like it gives it an edge, considering this is a historical fiction novel, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the spine is intact. The pages are intact. There's no writing whatsoever. Um, they're slightly yellowed. But again, I feel like it gives it character. So if you don't mind that, then you know it'll be in the giveaway that's coming soon. Um, I have the Return to Me by Lynn Austin, which is book one in her Restoration Chronicles. Perfect condition. It just the only thing is that there's pen inks. I'm going to try to get that off if I can. And then we have The Robe by Lloyd C. Douglas. Again, good condition. Nothing really wrong with it. My only gripe is if I pay for a specific, you know, thing, I don't want it to come up with bent up pages when you tell me that the pages are intact. This page here was like severely bent. And, um, you know, there's slight water damage. Again, nothing too crazy. You definitely can still read it. But, um, again, let me show you guys. And that went for like a couple pages. The water damage um again not bad the only book that i'm really concerned about is this one from angela hunt which is egypt's daughter um the actual content is perfectly fine the like the content itself within this book is great um there's no markings on the inside from what i found when i you know breezed through the book as i was flipping through i didn't see any markings the only thing i had a problem with was that there was a big giant hole in the cover and obviously I can tape it up, which I'm probably going to tape it up on the inside. It, it doesn't look too bad, but there's still a hole. So I don't know if I'm going to give this one away or not. Let me let me know what you guys think I should do, because I really do want to give all five of these books away with some of those bookmarks, because I am an advocate for reading books. So I have a few giveaways I'm working on, um, some Bible study giveaways, um, Bible giveaways. I recently just got an email from a, pu a publishing company with some new Bibles that they'll be releasing and I'm going to get those Bibles for review and then I'm going to give them away because I'm not going to need all those Bibles. I'm just not. So, um, yes, I do have Bible giveaways coming. Um, you know, children's giveaways coming. Like, I have a lot of giveaways that I'm working on for 2019 because I really want to, um, give back this year. Like, I really do. And I do want to thank you guys so much. So, let me know if you would be interested in this copy despite the whole, again, it's not bad from afar, but when you look up close, it's just like her face. It looked like her face is cracking. So I'm really, I am going to tape the inside of it so it's not too bad. Um, again, it's not a bad copy. It's just there's a hole in it. So let me know if you'd be interested in this book. I don't know. I might do a quick giveaway on Instagram or something. I don't know. But um, that is it from a book haul. I'm excited. Um, so I now have to rearrange my bookshelf so that all these books can fit because i have a shelf up here at the top with more where all my fiction like my biblical fiction fit with um my red books but it doesn't work anymore because this is going to take up that whole shelf so i have to rearrange my whole shelf and then try to work on recording my bookshelf tour because i'm trying to figure out the best way to record that video because i have way too many books like i don't know if i'm just gonna go like by genre and 
tell you guys some books and not all the books. I don't know. Do you guys want to know all the books on my shelf? Or do you want to know like some of my favorite ones or the ones that I'm, I really want to read? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section because I don't know. But, yeah. And if you guys are wondering why I'm a little bit more active. Um, when I recorded the first part of this haul, it was like dumb early. Like early in the morning. And um, as I'm recording this right now, it is 5.46 p.m. So, yes. A little bit more energized. And I got my homemade smoothie here that I've, I made. Which is raspberries, blueberries, um, strawberries, mango, peaches, and pineapple. With some water and a lot of sugar. Um, so yeah, again, that's it for this haul, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see a review on any of these books, let me know. I definitely have book reviews coming. I know I keep saying that. Just work with me, guys. Work with me. But, um... Yeah, that's it for this haul. These are all the books that I got in January. I'm not sure what's going to happen for February because I got so many emails and so many books coming <laughs> from authors and publishers. So I'm super, super excited. So I'm going to end this video, go organize my bookshelf. And um, when I get those books on Monday, I will add the clip towards the end. So you probably won't see this book, this video until like next week, Thursday. But um, yeah, that's it for this video. And I'll touch bases with you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys, so I'm, I just came into my mother's room quickly. But, um, so remember, these were the two copies that I was still waiting on. Today is Monday. Let me get this to autofocus. Today is Monday, and it did just come. So, again, I purchased these both in very good condition. This one came with, you know, slight water damage. Nothing too crazy. It doesn't bother me. Um, a bent-up page. And then this one came with pin marks on the cover so I did contact them like I told you guys in the other part of the video and I did they did send it out but it didn't come until today so here's the packaging here's what it looks like it just says thrift books largest online used bookstore and let's see so here is the new copy of the robe and it looks good the spine it's not bad okay um, the pages are a little bit yellow, but that doesn't bother me. I think it adds to the whole idea of the book. But, um, yeah, so the new copy is perfectly fine. Um, it looks like it could have the spine broken slightly in this area here. But that doesn't bother me. I don't think the spine on this one was bad either, yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to be giving this copy away. It's not bad, again, it's just... You know, if I pay for something, I want it as described. So here's that copy that I'll be giving away. Here's the copy I'm keeping. And then for return to me, here is the new copy. Um, not bad. This came a little bit bent. Doesn't bother me. Spine is intact, unlike this one. The spine was a little broken. Not damaged, but, you know, just slightly. And, um, yeah. Flipping through, I don't see any markings, no writing. Again, the pages are a little bit stained. It does not bother me. Some, you know, mishaps on the page edges. But, I mean, I think these are both great. So, here's the other one. I'm going to try to clean this up before I give it away. But, um, yeah. I think that Thrift Books overall is a really good website. Um, it is kind of basic um, touch and go or kind of random whether your books are going to come in good condition as it says. But, they do... Um, do great with customer service and and giving you sending out new books that um, are according to their condition if that makes sense so do i recommend thrift books i definitely do i mean you're buying books less than five bucks less than six dollars um that can be in brand new condition and i don't mind secondhand books i totally don't mind it at all um i kind of like the secondhand books especially for biblical fiction i feel like that would be awesome um, and you never know if you'll get like a signed copy like I did with the one from Liz Curtis Higgs. Sorry about that if you hear that. That is the, uh, the fire thingy. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Here are the two new copies which are in pretty much good condition. Very good condition as it states. Um, no problems. Again, this one has slight damage to the spine here you can tell but it doesn't bother me um i mean it is what it is i'm gonna put these on my shelves i'm gonna put the other two away to the side for giveaways in the future and that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed this haul video and i'll see you guys in the next one